Our scripture today is from the uh, book of 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 to 15a. Uh, give you a moment if you'd like to read along in your pew, pew Bible. And, uh, and let's, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to hear your word together. To, um, we pray for your spirit of understanding. Help us to understand those things that you desire us to. To draw closer to you. To know you all the more that our hearts may be more yours and the way we live may reflect your your love. Lord Jesus, we thank you for each opportunity we have every day to live in your spirit, to be in your presence. And we also ask for your mercy to be on the sermon, that it may be used by you, for you. Lord, we thank you for all that you are and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 to 15a. Hear now God's word. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with the roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about destruction of the heavens by fire and elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our scripture today, again, is within your, uh, your devotion, uh, the, the Advent devotion which I passed out. Um, it's our Sunday reading, and this comes from the lectionary. And I've been challenged, as I told you last week, by this, this year's le- lectionary, uh, because it doesn't, it doesn't have a lot to do with the traditional understanding of Christmas. I mean, we're not talking about shepherds or wise men or angels or things like that. Um, the last week's sermon is, or last week's scripture is similar to this week in that we're looking forward to the com- coming of Christ, Christ's king, king, kingdom. Um, and so thinking about this, I was really, um, really confused at first as to what these two things in common they do. They have something in common. Uh, one of the things is that uh, Christ's birth leads into Jesus' coming again, you know, eventually. Um, but also, the, the feeling's the same. Talked about last week, the word Advent means coming. And so, as Jesus' birthday is coming, so Jesus' is coming again is eventually going to be upon us. But there's something else, I think, especially within the church, that these two things have in common, and that's the word anticipation. Now, Christmas, when I was a kid, we anticipated Christmas. The anticipation was high in our house. We couldn't wait for it to happen. We were all extremely excited. Uh, Mom and Dad had a, a knack of reminding us or showing us that this Christmas season is different, that there was something about special about Jesus being born, uh, that we just couldn't wait to, to see and celebrate to, to, together on Chris, 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 Christmas Day. Um, parents did a real good job at, at focusing it on Christmas, on Jesus' birth. We were excited for the gifts, too, there's no doubt, and the stockings and, and the, um, uh, the, the cookies and the decorations. I mean, those things we anticipated um, greatly also. But Jesus' birth was really special. The church, too, anticipates the coming of of, uh, Jesus to come again. 
We look forward to this mightily, the earth being changed, earth being renewed, a new heaven, a new earth where Jesus is king, king all, always. That too is something we greatly look forward to. In fact, so palpable is anticipation during this season that uh, the secular world got on the bandwagon and is now making money off of an, 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 an anticipation. Uh, meaning, um, what, what this, for example. Does anyone have a cheese advent calendar? You got a cheese one? Do we? J- Jillian gave you a cheese one, yeah? So we got a cheese advent calendar. Uh, the way these advent calendars work, of course, is that for every day getting closer to Christmas, you open up. Uh, the day that it pertains to, and there's a gift inside. That anticipation, that excitement, you get, open it up, (coughs) excuse me, and you get to experience cheese. Cheese isn't the only advent calendars they got. Probably um, chocolate, anyone chocolate? Collins chocolate. Sock, I, I got Stephanie a sock a- advent calendar one year. Um, all baby Yoda socks, I, I think, the, the one, one year. Uh, they, they make a whis, whis, whis whiskey at advent ca- calendars. Uh, all, ca- I mean, all, all, anticipation is so strong around Christmas time that the secular word says we can make money off of this. Growing up, I had an ad, advent ca- calendar too um, when I was started when, when I was born. My parents had an advent calendar. They hung it up on January 1st. It was just a regular calendar. And then when December came, then it turned into an advent calendar because we were counting down to uh, Chris, Christmas. Nothing special like opening up flat, flaps and, and getting cheese. Something about that anticipation that's so strong this time, time of year. When I was thinking about the sermon and preparing for it, uh, during the course of our talk just now, I, I define anticipation um, a few times by saying that excitement that we feel uh, for, for, for the, the coming of Christmas Day. Um, but man, when I looked up the definition of anticipation... That is not the definition of an, an anticipation. Uh, I mean, you know, minus, of course, the Christmas Day part, but the excitement of expecting something, that's not the definition. So let me get the definition of anticipation for you. It's actually not very helpful. Uh, the action of anticipating something. So, yeah, not, not super helpful. So you got to look up an, anticipating. So let's do that. Uh, it, anticipate, to anticipate something, is to regard that thing as probable, or to expect or predict. Nothing in there about excitement. Uh, The definition to anticipate is a neutral thing. It's not good, it's not bad. We can anticipate things that are good, and we can anticipate things that are bad however we define those, those things in, 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 in our lives. We can anticipate Christmas, for example. We know it's coming, it's predicted that that day is on, on its way, and so we anticipate its, its arrival. We can, as uh, Ashley and her family have been doing for so very long, anticipate the coming of her child. And hopefully that will uh, happen on Wednesday. <coughs> We can also anticipate poor things. We can anticipate things like being fired because we made a mistake. We can anticipate um, uh, an argument, an impending ar- ar- argument. You know you got to bring up something to a friend or, or a fam- fa- family member, and you're anticipating fighting. You're predicting um, the probability that they're not going to be ha- happy and it's not going to turn, turn out good. So I I thought to myself, why in the world then, if anticipation is a neutral term, why do I have such a positive outlook on it? 
I never knew anticipation was strictly neutral. I always, you know, anticipation always had such a happy connotation. And for me, I think the answer lies, of course, in Christmas. Christmas is such a joyful thing, such a, a happy thing that Jesus Christ is born. Nothing can take, 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 take that away. Nothing can dampen that truth. Not only is it a probability, but it's a, a sure thing. And Christ being born, of course, is a wonderful thing. For in our lives, it means everything our candles are set for, uh, hope, peace, joy, and, and love. So that's an answer for next week. We'll light the candle of joy, if you rem, 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 remember that. Uh, the birth of Jesus Christ reminds us also of what Peter was talking about in the coming of Jesus' king, 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 kingdom. But there was a time when the anticipation of that started to lag. In the early church, when they start, when uh, Jesus was ascended into heaven and Paul's ministry started to take off, he preached, Jesus will come soon. And for them, that meant soon, like any day now. Could be next week, could be next year, but it was going to happen in that generation. And it didn't. And their anticipation started to wear off. That which was probable started to become maybe improbable. So they were starting to not anticipate it anymore. Paul's tone started to change. That Jesus will come again. And that is not only a probability, but it's a promise. They didn't know when. Peter reminds them this. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. So if God says soon, who knows when that day will, will, will come? God soon is our not so soon. But we wait. The problem with waiting, and, and even waiting in the midst of anticipation, is the uh, impatience that starts to set in. When is this going to happen? When is this going to come? Christmas is so far away. I mean, I'm old enough to know it's really not that far away. But as I was younger, boy, it seemed really far away. When it comes to anticipating and, and time changing as you get older, I've shared this with you before. When, when I was younger and the kids were younger, they were two or four, one or three you know, they're two years, years apart. So when they were in that young age, um, I, I would complain about them. You know, they're such a handful. I can't take their energy. This is so hard. This is Stephanie's, like, prime years. She's really good at this, and I relied on her a lot during this, this, this time. Um, but, but the older folks always said the same thing. You know, don't wish for them to grow up, because one day you're going to turn around and they'll be all, all grown up. Well, and then, of course, me being the smart aleck that I, I was at the time, I would, of course, turn around and say, well, it's not today. Now, I've said that before, and, and I say it now because I turn around, and it seems to be today now. Like the time came. My kids are now 18 and 16. They're they're starting to be all grown up. That That time that I thought would never come is definitely on, on its, its way. The reason sometimes, as Peter points out, that the time seems to lag on in the midst of our anticipation is not because God is dangling a carrot in front of us that just to tease us. It's that God is giving us time to prepare. That the moments that we have of the waiting or so that we may get ready for whatever is, is com, com, coming. Because God wants us to be prepared. In verse 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. Some understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to, to, to come to, to re repentance. 
these times of anticipation where the thing that we're waiting for has not yet come are some of the most important times of of our, our, our lives. We can spend our time complaining that it's not here yet, or we can spend time getting ready for it, whatever it might be. And I pray that as we get ready for Christmas and Jesus is coming once again, that we do so as Paul encourages us, as Peter encourages us, that we live holy and God, godly lives. And that we make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with, with, with Christ. And all, all, all that, that, that we do. I pray that we are a reflection of Christ's love now and always. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Share with you this benediction today. Rejoice in in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen and amen. Go in peace.